call this meeting to order. For members of the public and the media who are listening by the phone, we say welcome and ask that you please place your phone on mute so we can minimize background noise. If you have questions, please contact the board's communication office after the meeting. For everyone on the phone, <coughs> please remember, do not place us on hold. Do not place us on hold. As much otherwise, as you'd like to. <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, we will all get to enjoy your on hold music. Now, Monoka, please call the roll. Okay, Chair Hosseini. Here. Governor Beard. Here. Governor Tripp. Here. Chair Hosseini, you have a quorum. Thank you. I'd like just to take a moment to welcome all of you to Daytona Beach. Usually we have our meetings in big cities. But we also have beautiful uh, small cities that we are so proud of. Daytona Beach and Daytona Beach area enjoys from a tremendous educational institution. And I'll mention some to you. We have Bethune Cookman University here. We have Stetson University here. We have Ember Riddle Aeronautical University here. And we have a branch of UCF. Uh, actually in partnership with Daytona State College. But last, not least, we have Daytona State College. Um, I am delighted and appreciate for Daytona State College to give us this facility uh, to use for today's meeting. Today, um, we have uh, Chairman Dwight Lewis here. Chairman Lewis, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. We really appreciate it. And also, President Carol Eaton. Uh, Madam President, would you like to tell us a little bit about your college? <laughs> yes, of course. Thank you, Mr. Hussein. You know that presidents love to brag about their institution. And let me start with this beautiful building. Uh, we are in the Husseini Center this morning. Uh, it houses one of our signature programs, which is our culinary and hospitality program, uh, named after a very strong supporter of this institution. So we're very delighted to welcome you here to the Husseini Center this morning. We have about 14,000 credit students at Daytona State College uh, and another 14,000 that are, are in our continuing and workforce development programs. So at any one point in time, we might have as many as 30,000 students passing through our doors. And while we might not be the largest of the state colleges in the, in the state of Florida, we do like to think that we provide the kind of education that the uh, residents of Volusia and Flagler County deserve. Uh, in addition to our outstanding culinary and um, tourism programs, we have a, a magnificent photography program with Mr. Husseini mentioned our partnership with UCF. In fact, our partnerships with our state universities are so important to the students that start their career at the community and state colleges and have the opportunity to transfer on. So I thank you for all of those partnerships that you uh, allow our students to have access to. And the work that we do here in higher education in the state of Florida is so important for the quality of life for so many people uh, whose lives we touch together. So thank you very much. We are just honored and pleased to have you here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Madam President. Um, we really appreciate that. Um, I'm also honored to mention that we have uh, with us today uh, Senator Evelyn Lynn. Um, uh, Senator Lynn, can you come forward a little bit? And, uh, and, and she has been, uh, she's from our area. Um, we uh, love Senator Lynn. Uh, we're also afraid of her. Um, and uh, <laughs> and uh, I remember when I was coming out of the elevator, I always tell this story, and I saw a university president, and they said they're coming to meet you. And I so said, I was just there. And the university president was, she in a good mood. Uh, <laughs> So you have been such instrumental in our university education. We want to thank you so much 
Senator, do you have any word of wisdom for us today? I, words of wisdom, I don't know about that. This is a difficult issue you're tackling this morning. Uh, I do want to welcome you to Volusia County. We are thrilled to have you at this magnificent Hosseini Center. Um, it's a beautiful addition to this great college, our state college here. And uh, I would like to say thank you over the years for all of you who have served uh, the Board of Governors have served higher education. I see so many, whether they're staff or and Frank Brogan and I go way back. And uh, your, your wonderful members who have come to see me many times. And uh, we've talked over many issues. And I regret that I won't be there after November. But then you won't have to be afraid of me anymore. <laughs> but I'll be on the outside watching just to say. <laughs> but thank you so much. I have you, hope you have a very successful week. <laughs> and and what I meant was we were afraid of you in a good way. Because we want to make sure we've done our homework when we come see you, because we knew we'd be bombarded by questions from you, and <laughs> you've done your homework more than we have done. Well, just remember, I did fight hard for your money, and we must continue to do that. It's very, very important right now, especially in terms of what's happening with Pico and many other things. Thank you. Thank you so much, Senator. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes of the meeting held January 12, 2000? 2012. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried unanimously. Okay. First, I would like uh, to welcome everyone to this meeting of Select Committee on Florida Polytechnic University. I want to welcome trustees Steve Mitchell and Byron Chin from the USF who are here in person with President Ginshaft and key transition staff from USF. President Ginshaft, welcome to Daytona Beach. Thank you so much. USF trustees Brian Lamb, Stephanie Goford, and Jordan Zimmerman are joining us by phone. We also have Provost Glover, Dr. Glover, thank you for coming to Daytona Beach. Thank you. And a representative from the General Counsel's Office at UF at the table. Finally, we have Provost Steve Hall from Polk State College representing President Elaine Holden. Thank you all for participating in this important meeting. Um, and I am going to go just through from this table real quick, you know, um, and, and just ask the people just introduce the, themselves um, and tell us that uh, what they, uh, who they represent and where they come from. And I know we have uh, Mr. Tushton here. I'm going to st start with Mr. Hall. Steve Hall, uh, representing Dr. Eileen Holden and the Polk State College District Board of Trustees. Good morning. David Tutston, Vice President and CEO of University of South Florida in Lakeland. Byron Shen, USF uh, Campus Trustee, but also for Service of Manatee and the General System Board. Judy Genshaw, <coughs> University of South Florida System President. Uh, Steve Mitchell, a trustee of the University of South Florida and a member of our oversight committee. Okay. Minoka Zentler is corporate secretary board of governors. Uh, Dick Beard, board of governors. Mori Hosseini, board of governors. Frank Brogan, chancellor of the state university system. Nor Norman Tripp, board of governors. Vicki Shirley, general counsel, board of governors. Tim Jones, chief financial officer, board of governors. Jan Ignash, Chief Academic Officer, Board of Governors. Joe Glover, Provost at the University of Florida. Barbara Wingo, representing the General Counsel's Office at the University of Florida. We, the, uh, the, uh, the board members, um, are depending a lot on our staff. They're the one that work day in, day out, uh, to, to prepare these documents and prepare all the behind, you know, the work that needs to be put together uh, for us to be able to conduct our business. And that's why I want everybody at the table to introduce themselves, you know, 
usually our staff just want to be uh, don't want to be you know mention the names and um, and um, and we also have Randy going and our chief of staff to our chancellor is here Randy welcome and Nancy is here and 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 so anyway when the select committee was originally formed by the then chair Parker in November 2011 the committee was asked to report to the board of governors on a quarterly basis on the progress that USF Polytechnic campus was making on the benchmarks adopted by the board in its November 2011 meeting. The select committee met on January 12, 2012 and USF was making good progress on the benchmarks. During the full board meeting in March, an update about the select committee work was presented to the full board. Included in the report, that report was an update on Senate Bill 1994, which would, among other things, establish Florida Polytechnic University. At that time, the bill had passed both the Senate and the House, but had not been presented to Governor Scott for his consideration. On April 20, 2012, Governor Scott signed Senate Bill 1994, immediately establishing Florida Polytechnic University as part of the state university system of Florida. As Chair Colson stressed in his comments on the signing of Senate Bill 1994, higher education governance in Florida is a collaborative process. And I repeat that, collaborative process. The Board of Governors is responsible for managing and overseeing state universities. And the legislative and executive branches have the power to establish new institutions. The Board of Governors respect the decision that the legislator and the governor made to create the 12th university in our system. This committee will work hard to ensure that the Polytech is a success. Our committee will now focus its efforts on ensuring a smooth transition by following a twofold path. We will not only monitor USF's teach out at Lakeland, but also undertake the task of getting the new university off the ground. This monumental effort will require active participation from, board of, from the Board of Governors and its staff, USF, UF, and Polytechnic. The staff at the board office has been meeting regularly with the staff from USF since Senate Bill 1994 was signed. They have also had communication with UF. Based on updates that I have been receiving, we have a huge task before us. I am, however, confident that we can create a university designed to approach higher education from a new perspective based on the polytechnic model successful in other states. One of the first steps in this process is establishing a board of trustee for the polytechnic. Vicki Shirley will talk more about this in a few minutes, but let me say that we want the members of Polytechnic Board to be of the highest quality. So we have issued a, ch issued a challenge to our country's finest leaders to apply and help us realize the vital goal of creating this new model. Now let's turn to the task at hand. The select committee 
would like to hear from all parties. So we will have opening remarks from Chancellor Brogan. Chancellor, welcome to Daytona Beach. Thank you, sir. Trustee Brian Lamb from USF. President Judy Ginchev from USF. And Provost Joe Glover from UF. Chancellor Brogan, your remarks. Thank you very much. Uh, and before we go any further, I too uh, want to thank you, Madam President and Mr. Chairman, for hosting us here, not only at, uh, uh, at the State College, but also in this beautiful facility that bears our partner's name. Uh, something that hasn't been said yet this morning is we all need to wish uh, Chair Husseini a happy birthday. Um, happy birthday, Governor. He sure knows how to throw a party, doesn't he? Um, I also want to thank everybody who's come together and some of these folks have traveled rather long distances to be here for this very important meeting. And then to say this, um, th th this is not new. Uh, we have been meeting for many, many months uh, on the issue of the Polytech. Uh, we began uh, a strong partnership with the University of South Florida, uh, the USF Polytech, and all associated with uh, that um, a long time ago in terms of working with oversight to make sure that we were advancing the cause of the creation of what ultimately would become an independent uh, polytech. Uh, we were using a model that had been approved by the Board of Governors with metrics that were uh, laid out for us by the Board of Governors. Everyone was conscious of exactly what we needed to do and how we needed to move forward. Uh, on all of the aspects that would ultimately see at some point in time uh, the uh, creation of an independent uh, polytech for the state of Florida. As Governor Husseini mentioned, following this last legislative session, uh, the legislature and then with the signature of the governor, uh, the executive branch uh, decided that we would take a different approach to the same end. What I would like to affirm here today uh, is our continued commitment to that end, uh, but to make certain people understand that the new route that we will be following is complex. Uh, we had a chart uh, that was, uh, a course that was charted. We were following that chart. Uh, we now have taken a different approach or are taking a different approach to the same end but it is not just as simple as uh, shifting into a different gear. Uh, there are many complexities that we continue to find uh, as a result uh, of the new approach that we are now taking. And having said all of that, uh, it doesn't see our commitment wane. Uh, it doesn't see our aggressive position on this um, uh, put into a difficult circumstance. It is simply taking the new game plan and making sure that we all know what it is, who is responsible for what, and what kind of timelines that we would put uh, on this activity to get to the same place at the end of the journey. The last point I will make is uh, this. Uh, quality has to be the watchword here. Uh, creating anything new should be based on a desire to see it created with the highest of quality. When you're talking about a state university, that statement uh, is imperative. It has to be about not just creating things along the way that will give us a 12th state university, in this case, Florida Polytech. It should be about making certain that every move we make along the way is of the highest quality to assure that once the doors are open, the classrooms and laboratories are full, that we boast not just a 12th state university, but a 12th university based on quality. Quality takes time. And I want to remind people in their excitement and their enthusiasm to see this all through, that the decisions that we are making today will ultimately determine whether or not we create something of high quality. And that is what I think, and I, I know we all do, share in common. That's what we believe we have a responsibility to see after. So whether it is the formulation of a brand new 11-member board of trustees 
who will, once they are seated, take on a completely uncharted development of a 12th state university. We've never been here before in this exact circumstance. Or whether it is the work that has to be done in between or thereafter. We've got to make sure that all of it is done with a keen eye toward quality. We owe that to the state of Florida and the state university system. I also know of, of USF's commitment, and I would not beg to speak for President Genshaft and her board, but working so closely with them on this project from the beginning, and now as we change course, um, their commitment continues, and it stands. Uh, their role is changing in terms of the transition, and certainly their role is changing in terms of the teach-out responsibility, but their commitment has not waned. The amount of time and energy that the uh, staff of the University of South Florida, their board members, and that university community have poured into this effort is to be lauded, and we appreciate it very much. Many of these questions have never had to be asked before in the history of the state university system, quite frankly. This is a first of its kind ever. And therefore, having good partners to work with, whether it's uh, David and the, and the people at the Polytech, or whether it's the people from Tampa at the University of South Florida, has been and continues to be imperative as we continue to search for that issue of high quality. And then I'll uh, wrap up, Mr. Chairman, by saying something that you said. I appreciate the efforts of our staff. Uh, the staff of the legislature, the staff of the governor's office, who have all put in time and energy and commitment to make sure that we just don't do this, but that we get it right, which is the key. Because what we're about to build has never been built before in the state of Florida. And therefore, we have an obligation to make sure that we just don't build it, that we build the very best of its kind in the country. And again, the decisions that we make today are the ones that will determine if that indeed is going to be the case or not. So I give way by saying we ask for people's indulgence, we ask for their understanding, uh, but please know that every day, all day, there are an army of people at work on this issue to make certain that we do, at the end of the day, get it right. And I want to thank, lastly, uh, our chair and the members of this oversight committee for their continued uh, work, their continued um, passion for making sure that this is all done and done well, because they represent the 17-member Board of Governors who has, at the end of the day, the final responsibility to assure everyone uh, that the Florida Polytech is not only created, uh, but at the end of the day will serve us very proudly for a long, long time to come. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chancellor. Uh, now I'm going to call on uh, the chair of a subcommittee on politic, uh, Mr. Brian Lamb. Brian, are you on the phone? Can you hear me? Hello. Um, Brian, are you uh, on the phone? Mr. Lamb? Hello, can you hear me? Oh, we can hear you very well. Trustee, can you we hear? can hear you. The question is, can you hear can, us? Can you hear us? This, this is Trustee Lamb. I am on the phone. Can you guys hear us okay, though? We can, we can hear you now, but we haven't been able to hear you. Is the speaker where it can be picked up from everybody speaking? Okay, we can hear you very well. Uh, Brian Lamb, um, I am turning over Hello. to you if you have any comments. We cannot hear you. Trustee Lamb, we can Hello. hear you, and we apologize that you cannot hear us, but we are ready for your remarks. I'm going to move you to the speaker, and I hope there's not going to be a lot of feedback. Okay, I'll be brief. Oh, okay, I'll be brief. Good, good morning. I apologize for having to be on the phone. 
Um, I'll, I'll be brief in my comments. This is Trustee Brian Lamb, and just a, just a couple of quick comments. I know this is a very important meeting, uh, and, and I just wanted to lead in with a couple of thoughts. Since our last conversation, uh, the USF Board of Trustees and our USF leadership has remained highly focused on the transition, and, and I would like to you know, kind of highlight the successful transition uh, of the Florida Polytech campus. As part of that, um, what we think is important today is that we really garner the, the, gu the guidance and support of the Board of Governors, uh, because that's, that's more important than ever as we really make this transition and that we, we make sure we're all clear around what's expected of the University of South Florida. I will tell you, and, and I, I never like to speak for anyone, but I will tell you from the Board of Trustees that you, you've got our commitment to make sure that we do this the right way uh, and that we take into the best interest not only our students, our faculty, and staff, but the state, because this is a commitment that we all made to each other. A couple of specific comments I'd just like to make is, as we go throughout the day. Number one, July 1st, in that time frame, is a critical date for all of us involved here. Now, to be realistic, it, it may be unlikely that we've got the full transition solved for by that date. And I think, you know, that may come up throughout the day, and we acknowledge that. Uh, and we've got a new, you know, state fiscal year beginning. We've got students that obviously uh, will, will need to be part of the transition plan. But what I'd like to highlight is even post-July 1st, as USF steps up to, to play a role in the transition, Today what we'd like to also accomplish is getting some clear guidance around what are the time frames of USF being able to provide that support and what is a successful handoff to the new Board of Trustees for Florida, for Florida Polytech. What does that look like? Uh, and when can we really kind of expect that to happen? So I feel comfortable that the, the USF leadership that's in the room is prepared to really provide some commentary around that. And we'll also have questions uh, that we could use your support around for transparency. I can recall very vividly that Governor Hassani and the rest of the Board of Governors and Chancellor Brogan had a specific ask of the Board of Trustees and our Oversight Committee to collaborate better. Um, you know, four months ago since we've had our last meeting, I hope there is a, a, a better feeling and, and not only perception but reality that the USF leadership and the board are doing a much better job of being transparent and collaborating. And that should not and won't change through this transition process, and we should hold each other accountable to that. Just a couple of other points. As we make the transition, we firmly believe that the decision-making role uh, of the new board, that we want to be careful as a USF board not to, to substitute our judgment or decision making for the new board. So I know there's laws and all those things that are in place and, and, and I just want everyone to know the intent is not for us to make decisions, us being USF, to make decisions that will run contra contrary to what the new board would like to see have in place. And so it's a delicate balance as we make this transition. So I hope that we can all kind of you know, commu over communicate to make sure we don't do something that we didn't intend around decision making. Examples of that that may come up throughout the day are around the leases or around construction or other motions that may come up throughout the day. So we'll be seeking the Board of Governors guidance throughout the process to make sure that we're all on the same page. And lastly, uh, as we think about the services that will be provided uh, and the involvement of USF staff and leadership, uh, we just want to be mindful around, you know, how do we ensure that USF is compensated for those services in a fair and reasonable manner? And I think that is language that's already outlined in legal documents. I think our intent is obviously to do that. Uh, where and when we can kind of remove the uncertainty around that. I think that will help with, you know, any anxiety or any under misunderstandings with the current folks working on this as well as the future board that will be in place. So that's an ask I know that the USF Board of Trustees would have. Uh, and Chairman Hassani, I, I really appreciate the opportunity to make a few comments to the group. 
uh, and your leadership has been outstanding throughout this process, and I think it's going to help get us to the finish line. So I'd, I'd like to just end my comments with that. Uh, again, apologize for not being there in person, but looking forward, forward to a robust discussion throughout the day. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Lamb. Um, you probably don't hear me, uh, but I want to tell you, you have been extremely transparent with me, and I really appreciate all of your hard work and dedication uh, to the cause of our students. Thank you so much. With that, I'm going to call on President Ginchaf to give us uh, uh, her remarks. Thank you, and I want to thank uh, our thank president at Daytona College. Thank you so much, and uh, also to Governor Husseini for the warm welcome that we've, we've received here in Daytona, and last night's event was spectacular. Thank you all. Our thank pleasure. you very much. Our honor. Um, the University of South Florida, since 2001, has had a different structure for our regional institutions than uh, th others throughout the state of Florida. And in 2001, Sarasota, Manatee, and USF uh, St. Petersburg were given their own fiscal budgets and their own fiscal autonomy, which is different than other uh, regional or branch campuses. In 2008, um, a bill was signed in making USF Polytechnic its own fiscal budgetary uh, authority. So with that, we have been um, looking at and trying to resolve many of the issues as to the kind of um, expenditures that have, that have come about. And I just wanted to say that this structure is, is a, a very different structure, and it, it does work, and um, it, it has a lot of judgment calls to it, and that's what you'll be hearing uh, when we talk about different issues this morning, particularly for uh, USF Polytechnic. In April, when the governor signed the bill, a decision was made, and uh, USF in particular started on a new path. Um, we have been very conscious and very deliberate in being as transparent as possible and wanting to engender the uh, great neighbors. Um, a, a decision is made, that's fine, we're on a new path and we want to have this handoff as seamless as possible. So when I, um, the governor signed the bill on a Friday evening, Monday morning I was out at USF, and now we're calling it USF at Lakeland. We were at USF at Lakeland, and I was out there uh, several times since then. But there was a, a, a lot of uncertainty from faculty and staff about their jobs. I did have a press conference with Representative Seth McKeel, and we ensured that all employees at USF Lakeland will have their positions for a minimum of one year, from July 1st, 2012 to July uh, first of 2013. Now they may have longer than that, but for to just to make sure that things were calmed and um, people were reassured of our commitment. We do care about students, faculty, and staff at USF Lakeland, and we had a very successful graduation in the uh, this spring where the students had the option, following the Board of Governors uh, list of, of requirements, they had the option of graduating from uh, with a diploma that said USF or USF Poly. We had 145 students graduate at that commencement. That was the largest that ever, that they've ever had. All of the students did want to have their degrees to say USF. 
Um, we are now in the process of a teach out. We are uh, teaching our summer school classes at the USF Lakeland campus at Polk State College uh, joint facility. And things are going as uh, smoothly as possible. As uh, Trustee Lamb has said, the, the University of South Florida faculty, staff, students have been working day and night, hours and hours and hours on this process to make sure that we are doing what the bill has outlined, what's in the best interest for all of the citizens of Florida, and working very closely with the Board of Governors. And um, I can tell you that we are prepared for this meeting. We, it is complicated and we do have questions. We do not want to make any decisions that are, um, that will have consequences that you all do not know about. This is very important to us that we do this as smoothly and as transparently as possible. So um, as Trustee Lamb had, uh, had indicated, a successful handoff is our ultimate goal. Thank you, um, Madam President. Uh, and now I'm calling on uh, Provost Glover. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd just like to make two brief comments. First of all, uh, thank you for inviting us to be at the table today. The University of Florida is pleased to assist the Board of Governors and, and the uh, state university system and the state itself uh, in this enormous endeavor to bring up a new university. So we, we are here, I think as President Matchin said to you, Chancellor, we are here to serve. Uh, and so it would be our pleasure to, to assist you um, as, as uh, directed in, in the statute. Uh, the, the second comment I, I'd like to make look, looks a little bit ahead. I know we're all here to grapple with some weighty legal and structural issues, but, but I'd like to actually look ahead a little bit to, to the building of the university. I, I think this is a remarkable opportunity. I can't tell you how many times I've uttered the phrase, if I could build this university from scratch, this is the way I would do it. Uh, and I think this, this really is an opportunity to build a university which follows the best practices and organization in academics, in administration. All of us are struggling to meet the interests of, of the state, of the Board of Governors and the state itself in achieving efficiency, uh, the proper outcome of students, and really setting the state up for greater economic development. And I think this is your real opportunity here. Uh, why am I making these comments now? There, there's an old saying in architecture that, that form follows function. Uh, and actually the way I think of it is function follows form. Build the university so that it achieves the outcomes that you want to achieve. Don't just follow old practices that because you have 11 universities that were built this way 100 years ago and function within these boundaries and with these strictures, don't assume that's the way you have to build this one. I think, I think you need to think creatively. Um, and there, there is a lot of, of best practices out there that we struggle to institute because we're locked in with muscle memory after 100 years of practice you have the opportunity to do something fresh. And so I would encourage all of us as we think through this process to keep that in mind. Thank I, you. Uh, um, uh, Provost um, Glover, I couldn't agree with you more. I don't think this governor um, is looking for us to do business as usual. He is looking for us to use the best practices and more and come up the most efficient way of doing business and creating this new university. Maybe creating this university is not all about building buildings because there are many ways today that you can teach students. So uh, thank you so much for your remarks. Um, to lay the foundation for the work of the select committee, the board's general counsel, Vicki Shelley, will provide 
an overview of Senate Bill 1994. And so let me just give you a little bit of background. Um, and Shirley, um, Vicky is going to give you a, a background. The board staff going to make presentation. And then I will ask USF and UF if they like to add to the comments. If they agree or disagree, we like to hear them. We like to know. The biggest comment I like to make today here is for all of us. There have been so much talk out there. So much yendos and people, this happened all kind of different things. Today, all of that needs to come out. We need to discuss, I think USF, uh, Mr. Touchton, um, has been on the job enough, and they, as, as the President Genchev said, they've been working day and night. You know, we like to look at if there is problems, we like to deal with it. We are not here to make judgment. Somebody else will do that. That's not our job. Our job is to look at all the situation and try to come with answers for them. So I will ask everybody, do not hold back. Say what you think. So I don't want to hear later on something comes out two weeks later in a paper and, and that something happened. We like to hear that today. At least we like to hear that we cannot talk about it for following, um, following reason. So, Vicky, with that, I'm turning uh, it over to you. Thank you, Governor Hussaini. I've been asked today, can you hear me all right? Uh, to provide you with an overview of Senate Bill 1994 uh, that the governor signed in April. And the section that it amends was the section that originally created USF Polytechnic University, Section 1004.345 of the Florida Statutes. And I'm going to go section by section through the bill without reading you the entire bill because it's quite lengthy, but so everyone has a good understanding of the obligations and requirements set forth in the bill. Uh, section 1 sets forth the criteria largely based on what this board uh, approved back in November for the ultimate independence of the new university. Uh, although it establishes a deadline of December 31st, 2016 as the date for which these criteria are to be met, uh, which was a departure from the board's motion because there was not a, a date certain uh, included in your, your motion for meeting the criteria. Instead, this board was going to be continuing to monitor the development and operation of the campus as it met the criteria. Uh, going through, the first is uh, the new university is required to achieve accreditation with the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools, or what we call SACS. And uh, you know, back to your motion, the board's motion had required Polytechnic to first achieve accreditation, separate accreditation as a branch of USF and then apply for accreditation as a freestanding institution. So this is a little bit different and Dr. Ignash is going to address that in her presentation and the difference in the timeline. Uh, they are required to um, satisfy the board's requirement with respect to the programs. The programmatic, programmatic areas should be those in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math and they are to attain, consistent with the board's motion, a minimum FTE of 1,244 with a minimum 50% of that FTE in STEM programs and the remaining 20% in STEM-related programs. Uh, it's, they're required to complete their current um, project, the Science, Innovation, and Technology Building, uh, and along with phase one of the wellness center and a residence hall or halls for a total of 190 beds, uh, which is consistent with the board's motion. They are to have the ability to provide the full complement of services for their students, either directly or through a shared services model, which again is consistent with the board's motion for financial aid, uh, for admissions, for student support, information technology, finance and accounting, and include an internal audit function. 
uh, once these criteria have been met, uh, the new Florida Polytechnic University Board is to advise the board, and the board will then confirm whether the criteria have in fact been met. Consistent with the board's motion, students enrolled at USF Polytechnic are afforded the opportunity to complete their degree program with USF, and USF is involved currently in their teach out program. Uh, then we get to section two of the bill, and this is the section that deals with the transfer of assets and liabilities between USF and the new university board. Uh, the first paragraph requires that all real and personal property, licenses and associated revenues, existing contracts, unexpended balances, appropriations and allocations, funds and mutually agreed upon obligations, responsibilities, and liabilities of the University of South Florida that relate to the Polytechnic as determined by the USF Board and the new Florida Polytechnic University Board shall be transferred to the new university. The next part of that section requires that all of the programs, functions, offices, records, faculty positions, and staff positions of the Florida Industrial uh, and Phosphate Research Institute be transferred to the new university. After these transfers are complete under the bill, then all programs, functions, offices, records, faculty positions, and staff positions of the USF Polytechnic are then transferred to the University of South Florida. Dealing, going, moving into Section 3, the new university is authorized to certify a direct support organization and a foundation. Uh, USF is directed to uh, obtain consent from the donors who donated funds to USF on behalf of the USF Polytechnic so that funds uh, for which donors consent can be, to be transferred can be transferred once a new board and that board has certified a foundation and the foundation is in place. I know that USF is diligently working to contact those donors um, and has been. So they are already on that plan. Section 4 invalidated all memorandum of understanding between USF and USF Polytechnic. Uh, section 5, USF is required to obtain the consent of the Federal Communications Commission and any third parties to uh, facilitate the transfer of an educational broadband service station license to the new university for the commission issued reference point in Polk County. And after that consent is obtained, and that's a process that can't begin either until we have a new Florida Polytechnic Board in place so that they can approach, along with USF, the federal, um, the FCC, to begin the process to obtain FCC consent and also approval for assignment of the lease that's uh, associated with that license. Florida Polytechnic uh, University, the new university, is to uh, use the space at the Polk State campus, the joint use facility. Uh, USF uh, will remain there under the bill for the period of the teach out. And in fact, there is no prohibition under the bill for USF, should it so desire, to continue to lease space or occupy space at the joint use campus. Uh, under the bill, as Florida Polytechnic's new campus is built out, then at that point in time, it is supposed to slowly transfer the space back to Polk State. Thank you. Uh, the, this is where the University of Florida comes in, and we appreciate uh, Provost Glover's commitment to help us build a new university from the ground up, because UF, using its expertise, is to provide the new university and the new university's president, once one is hired, with assistance for hiring, accreditation, administrative services, and any other services as may be required. Uh, the bill also uh, contains a, an immunity provision so that the USF Board of Trustees and the new Florida Polytechnic University Board of Trustees will be immune from any and all civil liability uh, related to the transfers in the act. The uh, we call it FIPR, the Florida Phosphate and Industrial Research Institute statute was, was amended in the bill to change from USF Polytechnic to the new university. And there was a change in our facilities chapter 
so that any university that is building a new campus can use carry forward and operational <coughs> funds that are brought forward from year to year from 2011-2012 through 2022 to 2023, those fiscal years. The sum of $6 million was appropriated to USF for its pharmacy school, and under the bill, the pharmacy school was transferred back to USF Tampa. Uh, the sum of $10 million is appropriated under the bill to USF for purposes of teaching out the students who are enrolled at the, the Lakeland campus. And again, you'll hear more about that from Dr. Ignash and, and USF. This bill became effective upon the governor's signature, so essentially the new university exists now, but it, it doesn't have a board because that's our board's responsibility and that of the governor's. So that concludes my overview of Senate Bill 1994, and I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about uh, governance and legal issues. And one of the things I've been asked to discuss is the role of the Board of Governors in all of this. Uh, as you know, the Board of Governors has substantial constitutional responsibility for the system. You are required constitutionally to operate, govern, regulate, control, manage, and be fully responsible for the entire state university system and its constituent institutions. You are required to define the distinctive mission of each institution. And now you have the opportunity with a brand new institution to define its distinctive mission. You also have the responsibility to establish the board of trustees for the new institution. We have posted the vacancies. Um, I understand that there have been um, postings in national publications. Uh, we can get you those names uh, later. I, I would <coughs> assume it would be in the Chronicle of Higher Ed as one of them. We currently have four applicants for the five vacancies that this board is to fill. Uh, the governor has six vacancies, and we understand as of this morning that the governor's office has received six applications. The deadline for the applications is next week, May 31st. I want to repeat that. The deadline for the applications is May 31st. That's next week. Uh, and we don't have enough applications yet to fill our five vacancies. Uh, the board, it was my understanding, intended to take this up through Governor Hosseini's trustee nominating a development committee at the June meeting. Uh, this process entails uh, interviewing the candidates, vetting the candidates, uh, conducting a, a background search through FDLE, so it is a fairly time-intensive process. Once the new Board of Trustees is constituted for Florida Polytechnic University, they'll need to hire an interim president. Uh, whether they'll need to conduct a search to locate an interim president, uh, I'm not sure, but they will have to locate an interim president so they have someone that they can delegate the authority to to execute contracts and take all actions necessary for operation of the university. Uh, they will then need to conduct a full-blown presidential search for a full-time regular president. Uh, and that's something that I know that this board would be, would be interested in as well. Because the presidential candidates, both the interim and the full-time regular president, have to come to this board for confirmation. Uh, the foundation I touched on a minute ago, once you, we have a board in place and after they take steps to certify a direct support organization, and once we obtain donor consents and the monies that have been, were donated on behalf of Polytechnic have been transferred to the new university, uh, at that point in time, they should have a you know, foundation up and running and additional donors can donate additional money for the u new university. They, I've been asked to discuss briefly the transfer of real property. As you know, the Williams Group donated the land that the new campus is situated on uh, to University of South Florida. University of South Florida has been working diligently with Williams Group and their legal representatives so that once a new board is in place, uh, the consent to the transfer will be forthcoming from the Williams Company. I had asked USF about any current pending or threatened litigation, um, primarily to determine if there could be any claims that could have any impact on the new university. Uh, there are no claims currently pending that will have an impact on the new university. There is a faculty grievance 
that arises out of the relation, the employment relationship between USF and the employee. And I understand that Mr. Bressler is in the window period for filing a grievance, has, has indicated that he intends to do so. So, but again, that's related to the employment relationship with USF and won't have any impact on the new university. So that concludes my presentation, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, <clears throat> is there any uh, question uh, from Vicki? Or um, if USF legal team would like to add on um, anything different uh, or new, uh, we'd love to hear that. Let me start from here. Uh, Governor? Yeah, I just was wondering, what, the, the complicated part to me is what happens between now and the new board's institute, institute when they're put in place. And how do we, how, how does USF Who's respond? I mean, how do they make decisions on their own, uh, given the the law? Is there is can we can we be a sounding board for them, or well, do we do we have the authority to make a decision and say that's what we're going to do yes. or, or not? Yes, you, as the as the governing board for the system, you certainly have that constitutional authority. Uh, and we're, we act consistently with the bill and consistent with your co uh, constitutional responsibilities. And I know there are several areas today that USF does require authority, a complete, a, you know, a straight delegation of authority from this board in the area of certain leases because there are outstanding leases and those leases require monthly payments and they need authority to continue to make those monthly payments because those are existing contracts that under section two are to be transferred to the new university. Um, there is a, the $10 million appropriation in the bill is uh, contingent upon those transfers being effectuated. And there are a number of issues like that that I believe that Mr. Jones will be covering in his presentation because most of them relate to finance or property. Right, but we can, we can uh, cover for USF if we know what the decision is and we agree to it, then would, would that in its own right yes. give them the authority to do it without risking their... Uh, $10 million. Mr. Chair? Yes. Yeah. Um, That's to, what I'm to trying put to a, figure out. Great question, and to put a fine point on it, we've been working very hard with USF and others to try to first get our arms around what are exactly those issues that need to be reconciled in terms of governance, even in advance of, perhaps especially in advance of the Board of Trustees right. being ensconced. What this group can do today is to hear those issues, and uh, come up with recommendations that you all would decide to make then onto the full board. Uh, and we've already talked to the chair, Chair Colson, who is ready to call uh, an immediate uh, telephonic meeting of the full board of governors for purposes of taking up those issues and then uh, taking appropriate action as a board to officially finalize um, all, of, all of those pending issues whether they're the extension of leases or contracts or uh, who gets paid. Um, your, your question is right on point, uh, Governor Beard. We have to catalog those, come up with decisions as to how those will be handled, and then put those before the full board with your, hopefully, your recommendations for action. And we'd like to accomplish that as early as the beginning of next week. Right. Well, the me mechanics may be, be such that Every time they want a decision, they shouldn't have to come to the full board for a, a particular decision. So I don't know if we're going to try to put some kind of mechanics in place that would work where they go to you, Frank, or go somewhere. Uh, how on a day-to-day -day basis when this stuff goes. I mean, you've got a $100 million construction job underway. Right. Hey, decisions. It's a great point. Um, you, the thought that we're going to reconcile every issue here today no. and know that the Board of Trustees is still some distance from being put into place, whatever that is, we're working, as noted, very hard to do that, but uh, a lot of those things have to be dealt with to get a board in place. And even when the new board is put in place, uh, you have 11 volunteers who have taken on an enormous responsibility putting people on the ground that they can turn to on a daily basis for these operational decisions and recommendations will be critical as well. That board, like all boards, will meet 
uh, appropriately on occasion uh, to take up uh, their official action. But uh, what's going on at that institution today, just the construction project alone, goes 24-7 and has regular decisions that have to be made for it. So yes, sir, those are exactly the kinds of things we need to decide because even with this conference call next week, we'll get a lot of the major issues taken care of, but at the same time, we've got to have some ability uh, in advance of the board being named, and I would submit even uh, somewhat after that, to have those day-to-day -day decisions being made right along without having to reconstitute a meeting of the Board of Governors every time one of those things has to be done. USF wants the, the same thing. They, they want to do the, thing, the things that they've committed to do, but from a legal standpoint, they have to have the support uh, and the delegation authority to be able to make those decisions.